deity is a being of divine nature, a supernatural being, a god, a goddess. Their arrival would change our world forever. There was one who was attributed great wisdom, the inventor of written language, interpreter, advisor, the god of the moon and magic. Powered at the side of Ra, he is that of the Ibis. I, Thoth, the Atlantean, give of my wisdom, give of my knowledge, give of my power. Freely I give to the children of men, give that they too might have wisdom to shine to the world from the veil of the night. In the beginning, there was the Creator, the Father of all, and then the Created. Of the Created, there were those who took themselves as deities, universally entitled. Long ago, some of those beings took dwelling on a planet bound to a star system not far from the solar system. But their civilization was threatened by the instability of their planet and its atmosphere. As the desolation of their planet became imminent, as desperation for a resolution became prominent, they set a course for Earth. They were not like us, but we were like them. And as they anointed themselves as the kings of our world, they would set out to rule us as our God. There was a great cataclysmic event, a deluge that would wipe life off the face of the earth. So Thor had helped his father save mankind and then assisted in salvaging any form of biological life on the planet that he could. It was after the great deluge that these men of renown would rebuild the structures that would once again serve as beacons and ports from Earth to the stars, and Thoth would design them. A masterpiece on a scale to which no other man could ever accomplish even today. There were two main overlords of our planet, and one of their sons brought the people a religion and kingship like no other, and the people would worship him as Ra. Ra god of the sun would sit at the head as the god of wisdom would stand at his side, Thoth. Thoth was a master architect and also designed many of the world's ziggurats, monuments, the astronomical clock. Thoth's power was not limited or restricted to Egypt, no. At this time, these beings ruled the world. Thoth would go out to put a hand in developing other civilizations, such as the Olmecs and the Mayans. To them he is known as the Snake God, who brings together giant snakes and dragons. Thoth was also accredited to having had a hand in the fashioning of modern man. And there is another place, another civilization that Thoth may have helped establish during his reign. And that was the kingdom of Atlantis. It is here that Thoth would be known as the great alchemist, Hermes, 
Trismegistos, who is believed to be the author of the secret of Hermes, the secrets of the universe, the secrets of transmutation, inscribed onto a tablet of emerald green. I, Thor, the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after. These records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light. And as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Kem shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the Dweller, so that his purposes might be fulfilled. Purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom. Until I, too, approached the light emitted from the great fire. Builded I the great pyramid patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally so that it, too, might remain through the ages. In it, I builded my knowledge of magic science so that I might have here when I again return from Amenti. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free and incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another emissary on earth, I am the dweller, fulfilling his command so many might be lifted. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time ye are one with the master. Surely by right ye are one with the master, surely by right, yet are one with the all. Now I depart from you, know my commandments, keep them and be them, and I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. In his writings, he speaks of the children of light who had looked down upon the world and saw mankind in bondage. The children of light knew that the only freedom from that bondage would give mankind the ability to ascend to the sun. Thirty and two were the number of them who had come among men in hopes to see man thrive. Hermes instilled his greatest wisdom in the tablets. Man is a star bound to a body until in the end he is freed through his strife. Only by struggle and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out into new life. He who knows the commencement of all things free his star from the realm of night. Remember, O oh man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that is being is passing into yet other being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exist only in the illusions of the senses. Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. All through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O oh man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. 
It is in these texts in which Thoth reveal one of his greatest secrets for mankind, intended for those who live in a time where their survival is threatened by an outside force. Deep neath the rocks, I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto man. There, neath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake, yea, who have wisdom, bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee I have given my wisdom, now unto thee I have given my way. Follow the pathway, solve thou my secrets, until thee I have shown the way. Thoth reveals the formula for revealing darkness from one spirit, the incantation naming the gods of certain forces. Thoth then reveals the nature of evil spirits, the serpents behind the veil. Far in the past, before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they, to this cycle. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration, existing unseen by the children of Earthmen. Only through blood could they have formed being. Only through man could they live in the world. In ages past, were they conquered by masters, driven below to the place whence they came. But some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. Lived they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. I, when the blood was offered, for they came they to dwell among men. In the form of man they amongst us, but only to sight were they as our men. Serpent-headed, when the glamour was lifted, mm. but appearing to man as men among men. Crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men, slain by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, taking their form and ruling over man. Only by magic could they be discovered, only by sound could their faces be seen sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. But know ye, the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, able to send him back to his place. Came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. Swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from the place among men. Yet beware, the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen they walk among thee in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the semblance of men. Called may they be by the master who knows the white or the black. But only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will 
will surely appear. For only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. It seems as though Thoth was a master of one other skill that is less known. The power of transformation. The ability to shapeshift and take an alternate form. Who truly is this ancient deity of wisdom? So willing to teach mankind the secrets of the universe. And what else do these ancient texts, the emerald tablets, reveal? <laughs>